Dear audience, my name is Matthias Bernhardt and I will present you our paper Performative Porosity – Adaptive Infills for Architectural Elements. Architecture is about the creation of spaces, the various requirements of, of for example, bringing in light while at the same time transferring loads to the ground are in a constant dialogue to optimally distribute the material. To bring concrete, one of the most used building materials praised for its malleability into form, the construction of complex formwork was always needed. With recent advances in digital fabrication, more specifically additive manufacturing, the need for formwork became obsolete. Layer by layer, material can now be placed exactly where needed to comply with different performance requirements such as structural strength, acoustic absorption, thermal conductivity, flexibility or cell in growth for medical implants. We have seen impressive examples at smaller scales and were wondering what benefits these developments could have for architecture. Besides performance, let's look at defining the other term of the title, porosity. Instead of filled with solid material, a given volume is composed of both solid and void. But the remaining material uh, can be distributed over the initial full volume in many ways and thereby given dif uh, give different physical properties to the material. Porosity is defined as the aspect ratio of void over the total volume of the part. Porosities can be organized in different categories for example by the way of their creation. On the left we have the more stochastic patterns as they are found in nature, in foams, stones or bone tissue. On the right uh, the ones generated by mathematical formula, some resulting from the repetition of a unit cell like cross-based lattices or triplicaridic minimal surfaces. Uh, this study focuses on the latter but most of the presented methods are applicable to all of these geometries. Uh, geometry processing, like for example Boolean operations, are notoriously hard in conventional CAD systems uh, when the number of elements increases. Instead of the more conventional boundary representation of shapes by vertices, lines and faces, we choose volumetric modeling and function representation where space is defined as a scalar field and the final uh, printed or rendered geometry is just an isocontour of this field. We present a broad uh, palette of methods to take an initial unmodified field as an input. Again, uh, this can be anything, but we present it on the example of a TPMS lattice. Lattice uh, paired with a modifier. This can be a constant, a mathematical operation, or a geometric uh, object, or another field, uh, which then is used to modify certain aspects of the input, like dimensions, wavelength, or orientations to obtain an altered output with different physical properties and potentially a better performance. If the, in the following slides I will introduce a palette of 10 different modifications that can be applied to this example input and a cylinder film with a gyroid TPMS. The first modification is the type of TPMS. Besides gyroid there are for example Schwarz P, Diamond, Lidinoid, Neobius or Fischer-Koch they are all combinations of trigonometric functions of x, y and z, uh, as the one shown here for Schwartz p. The next modification is the orientation of the base plane, the position and the rotation of the lattice. Furthermore, with a constant number as a modifier, the global wavelength uh, can be modified. Uh, with another field as a modifier, the wavelength can be adjusted locally. The thickness of the solid parts can be adjusted also both locally or globally by dilating or eroding the lattice. The half solid, half void base configuration can be turned into a solid shell separating two distinct interwoven voids. Besides the conventional Cartesian coordinate system, alternatives like polar or spherical coordinate systems can be chosen. The input structure can be twisted around an arbitrary axis. The input field can be continuously morphed into another field, for example from one type of TPMS into another. While this modification uses a global factor F, uh, for the blend modification this factor is also dependent on another field modifier and allows to realize smooth gradient transitions between the two different fields. And these cross-sections are a small selection of possible modifications in an overview. Scalar fields are just numbers and no tangible geometry, so in order to understand them, it helps to visualize them. Here are six examples of sine distance fields, plane, cylinder, sphere, torus, sine wave and Schwarz phi surface, shown with color gradients in the unit planes, orange-red for negative, blue for positive values, along with the zero-level isosurface in light gray. 
With our method, all these fields can serve both as input or as field modifiers. Using the presented methodology of modifying input fields with volumetric modeling, we generated a series of sample geometries like the ones shown here and more examples here. All the examples have a porosity of exactly 0.5, half solid, half void. Uh, linear elastic analysis has shown the minimum deformation of a single node for the shelled gyroid shown here in the center. With the target to improve the stiffness or the strength of the part, the modifying field can also be the principal stress distribution retrieved from finite element analysis and simulating specific loads. The field obtained from FEA can be used to modify, for example, the thickness or the local wavelength of the lattice according to the principal stress distribution. We have shown that it is possible to change the type and orientation of the coordinate system globally. Currently under development is the option to modify the coordinate system locally as well, with the gradient vector of the scalar field input, the derivative of the distance function. We can rotate the coordinate system in each unit cell individually uh, to align with the flow of the field. Uh, a regular lattice can thereby be turned into a lattice with locally adaptive coordinate systems. The example shows that these continuities or singularities uh, in the modifying field, as well as undersampling, can lead to undesired artifacts. These effects can potentially be alleviated by smoothening the modifying field with a Gaussian convolution kernel prior to extracting the gradients. If we consider not only one configuration of input, uh, but a series of values, not only for one, but for multiple parameters, this easily generates a plethora of samples difficult to individually test manually. We are therefore also investigating more efficient ways of combing through the fitness landscape using grid search. To conclude, we introduce a robust computational design workflow that allows for the creation and modification of different families of porous lattices. All the presented examples are generated with my Grasshopper plugin Axolotl, available on Food for Rhino. We are currently working on the application of these methods to large-scale architectural elements together with our industry partners in concrete additive manufacturing and hope to present more of this work at future conferences. Thank you very much for your attention. If you are interested in our work and have questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to contact us.